this time in history where we want a different kind of relationship than most of our parents had. And the kind of relationship we want, which is very a lot of interpersonal, emotional, intimacy, and passion all together, there are skills to make that happen. Part of what's confusing is that falling in love is effortless. Hmm. We can't help it. And it can be we don't even want it if we start being drawn to somebody who's maybe with somebody else or it's not appropriate for whatever reason. It's hard to resist it. I mean, it takes yeah. a lot of discipline to resist that magnetic pull towards somebody. And it's different from just sexual attraction because you can be sexually attracted to a lot of people. But at any given time, there's only one person who captures that intense emotional romance, romantic energy that we have. And it's really powerful and it happens all by itself. We don't have to do anything. And when someone's in love with us back, I mean, it's boom, it's hard to keep people apart. And later on, couples will say, well, we don't have time to, to do this and to do that. But even if you're married to somebody, people find time for an affair. It's like, it's so powerful that we find time, we make each other a priority and we look our best for each other. And we're looking for everything we have in common and we're doing fun things and we're giving each other presents. You know, we, we're just all over each other. And it happens so effortlessly and it's so intense and so powerful that that's what we think this is what love is because it sure feels it's like the biggest magic in life when something like that happens it's so powerful and when it if it well it does eventually because there's it's, you know, it's like we're on a drug high there are mm -hmm. so many neurotransmitters and there's a whole list of them there's dopamine norepinephrine there's oxytocin which is bonding there's increased testosterone, there's PEA, which stands for phenylalanine. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how to pronounce it, uh -huh. but it also is another amphetamine type neurotransmitter. Now, all these things are pumping through our system and that can't last forever, but it's there long enough to bring people together to get them past their defenses. And the way one psychologist put it is, nature set us up to meet, mate and procreate. And once we've done that, then everything wears off and now it becomes you have to take care of this child that you created together. Yeah. But, but that intensity at the beginning. But the point I'm making is that it happens effortlessly and it's powerful. And that's our image of what it means to love somebody. And we're not prepared for, although falling in love is effortless, staying in love does take, I don't want to use the word effort, but I will say attention. Mm -hmm. It takes intention and attention but a conscious intention to attend to the other person, which we didn't have to do at the beginning. We were obsessed over the other person. We didn't have to try to pay attention to them. We couldn't not think about them. But now we have to pay attention. What's going on with them? What's going on in their world? How are they today? What do they need today? What do they want today? You know, what's going on? And so just clarifying what it is to stay in love versus to fall in love is one key thing. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the things about staying in love and then you know, how things go. Some of the things that put us off from another person or make it more challenging, the differences that come up. But the most, most important that when people come in for marriage therapy or counseling, it's often because they're having, a, it's usually because they're having a problem. If they're not having a problem, they're not going to come see somebody, you know, and certainly not when they're in love. You, you never see somebody there. But it's when they're having a problem, and so they think we need to fix the problem. The problem is what's coming between us. And what's more important, yes, you want to address the problem, but first and more important is you want to start building up the connection again. And I'll come back to why that's the key thing, building up the connection versus dealing with the problems. So building up the connection has to do with enjoying each other, doing positive things together, one suggestion that somebody made was, um, oh, what was it, like one minute pleasure or something, mm -hmm. that just come up with a list of things that are fun to do, to, like two people together, come up with things that are fun. And if you can't think of anything, remember back to when you were in love with each other, what were the fun things that you did? Mm -hmm. And what were the things you liked about each other? 
So what are you know, a bunch of just simple little things that make you feel good with the other person. And for someone, it might be a hug. For someone, it might be a gift. For someone, it might be that we take a walk, we go to a movie, we go skydiving. I mean, it's different for different people. But have a list of things that are fun, that are enjoyable, that make you like to be with the other person. Mm -hmm. And then find time to do those. Not, you know, every single day. It depends how time-consuming or not. But just that's like a technique for a couple to keep their connection of do things that connect you to your partner, things that you used to enjoy together that maybe fell by the wayside, especially after kids. But remember it when people say they don't have time, that's just another way of saying, I don't want to, because you find time for an affair in that same busy life. If that should happen, I'm not saying you're going to do that, but people if they can do that. They can find the time for something they want. Yeah. So that's one thing. Another thing is what somebody called, relational vitamins. And this is to, sometimes you have to remember it because it might not be what you're feeling at the time, but think of things that you appreciate about your partner, or you enjoy about your partner, or you like about your partner, you're grateful to your partner for, and tell them. Mm. <laughs> Especially if things get a little strange, a little distant, both partners feel unappreciated by the other. And so just to hear that, what you like about me, what you respect about me, you appreciate, that, you know, that doesn't take time. It takes willingness. And that's attention of, okay, what is it that I like about you? Or what am I appreciating? What do I respect? You know, like, gosh, you're a really competent pilot. I really respect that about you. It's not anything between the two of us, but it's something I respect about you. you know, yeah. That's the kind of thing a person can say. So those are a couple things. Oh, one thing is... This is, I, I'm sure you've heard of John Gottman because he's such a big guy in the relation. He's one of the top researchers and teachers in the, having to do with relationships and family situations. He's out of the University of Seattle or Washington in Seattle. And he just says, one of the first things that goes with couples is politeness. Hmm. Just ordinary everyday politeness. Please and thank you. And just bringing that back into a relationship being polite with one another. You know, that makes a difference. Yeah. We should feel respected by the other person and not taken for granted. And again, that's it's so common for people to stop being polite. And that's where you have to be conscious. This comes back to the point of staying in love requires conscious intention.